Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax. And while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, where are you? I'm out here. Where's out here? Out the front door. That's a nice place to be in your pajamas. I'm back in it now. That's even nicer. Say, what time does the mail usually come? Not so early. Can't you answer a question straight? What time does the mail usually come? Later than now. I give up. Comes at 8.31 and a half there. Does that satisfy you? 8.30. It's almost 8.30 now. And you are not even dressed. Dressed? Who wants to get dressed on a morning like this? Honestly, David. You're behaving like a schoolboy waiting for his first love letter. Come to think of it, that's exactly the way I feel. Aren't you ashamed? Not the least bit. I'm enjoying every moment of this. Enjoying it? Well, in a horrible kind of way, like a Boris Karloff movie. (laughs) How are you? Me, I'm fine. Say, look, if you want to make yourself useful instead of just standing around worrying, why don't you squeeze the orange juice? I'm not that worried. You were until I suggested the orange juice. All right, all right, I'll... I'll squeeze, but just today. Of course, just today. Have I ever asked you before? Well. Well? Well, no, darling. One, two spoonfuls. Yes? Aren't you nervous this morning? Me, of course not. Why should I be nervous? (coughs) You, uh, dropped the coffee pot. There was some butter on it or something. Made it slippery. Oh, is that it? I'll pick it up. I've got it. Ouch! Ouch! Oh. You all right? I'm fine. I hurt you. (laughs) (laughs) Where did I hit you? Here, let me see. Right here over my left eye. (laughs) There. How's that? All cured. Darling. Mm. Don't you want to hit me over the other eye so you can cure it, too? I don't mind. It's nice here on the floor. But it isn't squeezing the orange juice or percolating the coffee. Who cares? You will. You're sure now you're not excited or nervous that I can trust you with this coffee pot? I am positive. Because it's not every day we wait for the mail to tell us whether we've bought a house or not. Don't remind me. I'll drop the coffee pot again. (laughs) Somehow I just keep hoping the mail isn't going to come at all today. I keep hoping it'll come right away. David, Mr. Tucker may not accept a $10,000 offer. I know, but then again he might. So he might. Shh. Did you hear something? No. I think it's the mail under the door. I'm going to see. David, if it is the letter, open it before you tell me. If it is, you better get the aromatic spirits of ammonia ready. (laughs) Well? I must have been imagining things. There's nothing out here. Oh, David, the suspense is terrific. You're telling me. I could have sworn I heard that mail. Darling, what makes you think we'll hear from Mr. Tucker this morning? Well, I sent our bid in the night before last. Registered mail. It has to be answered by return mail. That means today, all right. Are you going to be terribly disappointed? If what? If the bid is refused, of course. Oh, I'll survive. Sure you will. I guess I will, too, but I'll still be disappointed terribly. If it's refused, it's all for the best. Are you going to be one of those everything is for the best kind of women? There might be any objections. You bet. I couldn't stand it. Well, whether you can stand it or not, if we don't get the houses for the best. David, you've got to believe in something. I'd rather wait and see what the letter says. I wonder what's happened to that blasted mailman. Should have been here by now. Just this morning he's late. I guess I might as well get dressed. Certainly. Don't you want to become a... Landowner with your tie on? Claudia, keep an ear on the door, would you? I'll keep an ear on it. I'll keep an eye on it. I'll... Shh, there. I heard it, too. I I thought you weren't nervous. I'm not. I'm just keeping you company. Well? Nothing. 
But look, the mail's been delivered to all the other doors. Well, that means... There's no mail for us. It can't. I've, I've got to hear today. Maybe in the 11 o'clock mail. And, David, if we have to wait to know, I'm sure it's for the best. That does it. Does what? You said it again. Now I'm sure that letter will be bad luck. You are? But bad luck for who, David? For you or for me? Listen, Kelly, I'm not going to bother Mr. Norton with them minute details. You can tell me Lottie McBride just as good if that load of concrete block is going to hit Redberry on schedule. But you better not tell me it's not going to get there. Yeah, I heard you. No, Wednesday ain't good enough. Tuesday sounds better, but... Oh, Monday is fine. Yeah, first thing in the a.m. Ah, thanks, dearie. Mr. Norton joins me in it. Monday and no slip-ups or else. So long, Kelly. Uh, Mr. Norton, Monday it is. He said, sure, it'll be there. After all, a Kelly couldn't very well say no to a McBride. <laughs> say, you want I should ring your missus again? I just tried her five minutes ago, but she'd blown the coop. Now, I figure she was picking up a lamb chop for the corner. Yeah, I'll give her a buzz. Oh, sure, the 11 o'clock mail is here. Uh, one advertisement from some building supply in Long Island. Yeah, that's all, Mr. Norton. It's me. I decided to make a personal appearance instead of spending the rest of my life as a voice through a switchboard. Oh, Mr. Norton, you are one for jokes. <laughs> Say, you're not looking so good today. I feel fine. Hey, you're looking kind of like a fish that's been out of water too long. Well, that makes me feel a lot better, Lottie. Seriously, maybe you want I should call a doctor? Lottie, that's very sweet of you, but there's nothing the matter with me. I've seen guys like you, all strong and fine one day, rugged as a blue plate special. The next day, laid out like an oyster on ice. You're making me feel better every minute. You've got to take preservations of your health, Mr. Norton. You're a very important man around this office and at home. Now, what exactly seems to be the trouble? There is no trouble, Lottie, believe me. All right, then stop walking around like a bloodhound and straightening out all my paper clips. No, oh, have I? I'm, I'm sorry. Well, I've got some plans to make up. I might as well get to them, I guess. Here you are, Mr. Norton. Here's an aspirin and a glass of water. Well, help yourself, Lottie. Take as many as you want. And try my wife again, please, in a few minutes. Men. They were all the same. Just infants in long pants. Killian and Norton. Oh, yes, Mr. Killian. You're not feeling very well? Lobster, huh? Oh, yeah. Lobster is murder with my mother, too. Yeah, he's here, but he don't feel so good either. I don't know, but I don't think it's something he ate. I think... What's that? Oh, sure, I'll switch you right in. <laughs> Goodbye now. Oh, well, gee, if it ain't Mrs. Norton. Come right in, honey. Thanks. Is Mr. Norton here now? Sure. He's on the telephone. Oh, let me know when he's through. Then I'll go in. Mm, okie doke. Say, it seems to be contagious today. What is? You're not looking so good yourself. I'm not? And your spouse, he's walking around here like a zombie. He is? Yeah, and Mr. Killian calls up and blames it on the lobster. He did. What were the three of you doing last night? Nothing. Oh, sure. Hang that one on someone else's ear. Well, to tell you the truth, uh -huh, we... Uh-huh, I thought so. We've been waiting for a letter. You've been waiting for a letter? Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, go on. Oh, really? It's a very important letter, all about our future. Oh, a friend of mine, she got a letter like that once, all about our future. From the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Oh, this isn't that kind of a letter. Not quite. Oh, there. The little light is out. And Mr. Norton is off the telephone. Go on, go right in. Thank you. If he changes his mind about that aspirin, I got a whole medicine chest in my top drawer. Though I never take nothing myself. I may want it for me, Lottie. Darling, is that you? It's me. Come on in. I'm in. Is anything the matter? I, I don't know yet, David. Don't know what yet? If anything's the matter. Oh, I've been trying to call you. Oh, I was on my way here. So I see. <laughs> well, we're a couple of dopes. We are? Here we are, standing around, looking like a 
couple of terrified wax figures. It's nonsense. I refuse to waste another atom of worry. From now on, I don't care... The letter if... came, David. The letter... It came? Yes. It came? Well, what did it say? I don't know. You don't know? I didn't open it. You mean you... Well, where is it? Right here in my pocketbook. You came all the way down here and never... I couldn't. I didn't have the courage. Well, well where, where is it? Where is it? Here. This is it, all right. Well, aren't you going to open it? Well, sure, I'm going to open it. You won't see a thing holding it up to the light, David. I tried. Oh, I was just... doesn't feel very thick. No. I see what you mean about not opening it. Well, we can't put it off forever. No, you can't. Funny, all of a sudden I'm nervous. David, I can't stand it. Open it. All right, all right. Your hands are shaking. I can't help it. It's silly, I know, but I... Can't help it. Well, David? Oh, that's that. Here. Look for yourself. David, I've forgotten how to read. Tell me. Mr. Jared Tucker returns my letter with one word on it. Yes? No. No? Yes. He says in one large word on it, no. Oh, David. Darling, are you all right? I'm fine. You won't sell us the house? Well, not for 10000 The title... You would you would think he would have grabbed it. You would think so, wouldn't you? You know, I've, I've, I've got a half a mind to... Now, wait a minute. Now, now darling, now don't you worry about Me it. Me worry? Why, David, I never felt better in my life. I know, I know. You're being a swell sport about it. No, no I'm I... not. No, I'm not. I'm awful. I had no idea. I... I just assumed David, that... don't be so upset. Please try not to... Do... I really thought... It's such a wonderful little house, the brook and the meadow and... Darling, honestly, believe me, I'm not upset at all. Uh, Claudia, you're really wonderful. You, you, you take it like a man. I didn't want that old house in the first place. But you did. But you were right. You were absolutely right this morning when you said that it's all for the best. What? I'm so glad you can look at it that way. Of course it's for the best. Because now I realize just how much more I want that place. How much more? And how much more you deserve it if you want it. And, darling, we, we're going to have it now. You just wait and see. Oh, David, I don't mind the waiting. It's the seeing that worries me. <laughs> These programs star Catherine Bard as Claudia and Paul Crabtree as David. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Lady, if you ran a business today and had lots of employees, know what you'd do? You'd probably install a Coca-Cola cooler so that you and your staff could pause and work refreshed. Well, goodness knows you do a full day's work and then some right in your own home. So why shouldn't you work refreshed? Why not stop for a moment right now for delicious, refreshing Coca-Cola? Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. Or ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs>